video today is about cervical cancer but before that uh, I'd like to just go through about uh, some basics of these cells so if it's a we have epithelium so we have a normal cells here but if there is a this this atrophy of the cells it's become smaller in in terms of the cytoplasm but the nucleus is remain the same and normal um, atrophy so if we have increase in the cell size without any changes we call it hypertrophy hypertrophy if the cells become increased in the number with the same morphological without any abnormalities then we call it hyperplasia so the focus of this topic is about metaplasia whereby we have a change in the mature normal cell type for example, in the cervix, we have columnar type of cells, uh, which um, at the squamous columnar junction, it's become the squamous cells, which also normal morphological cells without any dyscariosis. Um, so we have metaplasia. When a mature normal epithelial changed into another type of mature epithelium, that is metaplasia. But if there is a change of a type of epithelium with some abnormality in the cells, like mal, uh, mal dyscariosis, any poikilocytosis, or hyperpigmentation, hyperchromatism, then we call it dysplasia. But the moment when when there is an invasion in the uh, in the basal layer that not supposed to be, then we call it a neoplasia. So this is the highlight of this video. So let's begin first with the lining of the female uh, reproductive organ. Uh, so usually the question asks is about what type of cells that lining the the tract. So let's begin with the ovarian first because ovarian we have a cuboidal type epithelial, and cuboidal usually uh, can be seen as a cube cuboid uh, shape with a very huge nucleus, and it's it's a normal cells um, lining the ovary so it's a cuboidal type and this is um in this is the epithelial that uh epithelial that lines the uh, ovary that is why 85 percent of the ovarian cancer is coming from the epithelial type another 13 percent come from the uh, clear cells called um, ovarian TA your cells and then we have 9% of endometroid type type of ovarian cancer and we have somewhere uh, around uh, I think 3% of the uh, mucinous and this is all epithelial uh, this 85% is actually what I mean is serous, serous type. So we have serous and mucinous, and mucinous is actually quite low in, in terms of the percentage. Um, and yeah, clear cell is not that, uh, is quite frequent to be seen. So that is for the ovary. So we have the cells, epithelium cells that lined the fallopian tubes, uterine cavity, endometrium, and also in the cervix. Since the highlights of the video is about cervical cancer, I just would like to sketch a bit uh, the looks of the columnar epithelium. Usually, it's a single, uh, single-lined epithelium. So, and uh, we have somewhere here that I'm going to highlight later. But at the ectocervix, vagina, and up to the vulva. We have a cells that we call squamous cell. 
squamous cells. So squamous cells is uh, account about uh, eighty five percent of the um, of the cervical cancer CA. And in vagina, it's account 90% of all the vagina carcinoma in terms of the squamous cells. And also the vulva, it's about 85% as well. Okay, so let's talk about the cervix because it has a very uh, important structure and different from the other parts of the body. This is because of the hormone change. So... Um, the cervix contain a structure a, like a, a villus like t uh, structure and the cervical canal and the cervical canal which starts with the internal os and also the external os internal os and external os uh, it take, it's about three centimeter and it's lined initially by the cuboidal type. So in utero, after the after the um, the child the girl was born, usually this the metaplasia part, whereby the change in between the uh, cuboidal into the squamous, usually is inside the cervical canal. So it can't really, it, it won't be seen. It's somewhere here. The squamal columnar junctions. So from below, we can see it's just, an, it's just a normal uh, looks of the cervix before puberty. But when the, uh, when the woman achieve menarche, with the estrogen's level and all, the squamal columnar junctions will move and evert it. So now, the cuboidal cells lining will eventually evert it and turn it out. So we're going to see something like this. So now it's So when we look through the speculum, we can we can see there is a cuboidal cells lining. So there will be a new squamal columnar junctions here. Let me highlight the squamal cells uh, with green, and then you can see. Everything is green here. Okay. And then when uh, there is a vaginal discharge, there will be a squamous methaplasia that we call. It. So what happened is that when there is when it's exposed to the vaginal discharge here, so this is the original uh, what we call it. Squamal columnar junctions. Squamal columnar junction. So when it's exposed to the vaginal discharge, which is more acidic, it's become the the columnar cells will transform or change or under underwent metaplasia systematically uh, into the squamous cells type. And to simplify things, because um, the squamous metaplasia starts with the, uh, it can be divided into three stages. The first one, because um, the squamous cell itself, initially we have a cells that we call a cuboidal types of cells that lining the epithelium of the cervix so it's a cuboidal type of cells but as its matrix there will be and what we call pre-basal um, 
cells. It contains about 5 to 10 layers of cells. So this is a basal, this is a prebasal, and we have intermediate, which looks clo closer to, more similarly to squamous. So we have intermediate. And finally, we have the squamous, stratified squamous cells with a small um, nucleus and stratif multiple layer. So this is uh, the squamous cells that we actually refer to. So slowly, the cells uh, behind here, which is the reserve cells, will tend to become a basal cells and then to become a prebasal cells, intermediate cells, and finally a squamous uh, cells. So when this is the metaplasia was induced by the change in the by the locations the evited locations of the columnar cells which exposed to the estrogens, this caused the new the formations of a new squamous cells junction. So now we have the previous original uh, original. Um, squamo, uh, squamo columnar junction. Now we have the new squamo columnar junctions. So the the squamous metaplasias because previously I thought differently. Now this is the original uh, squamo columnar junctions. And after the changes of the squamous metaplasia, we have the new squamous columnar junctions. And this zone is what we call as transformational zone, TZAC. So transformational zone, so uh, if I uh, sketch again, so we have something like this, this is the cervix, we have a columnar here. And then we have transformational zone. And then we have the squamous. Okay, so in colposcopy, um, there are three different types of uh, transformational zone. Transformational zone divided into three types, type one, type two, and type 3. So what are they? So the first one is when, uh, when during corposcope, when you can see fully visible of the upper border of the transformational zone. This is the uh, visual limit. Visual limit. And you can see clearly the outer border and also the inner border of the transformational zone. That is type 1. So it's adequate. It's very good uh, corposcope findings to begin with. And then if we have something like this, you still can see the border of the inner border of the transformational zone. But very, with very minimal... Sorry. With very minimal um, columnar cells, then you call it type 2. But if you can't see the upper border of the transformational zone, um, then it's type 3, or we call it inadequate. You can't really assess the, the inner border of the zone because it's beyond the visible limits. Uh, we, we'll go back um, in depth about the colposcope. So what I want to highlight here is that the questions in the part 1 MRCOG is usually about, uh, as we know, cervical cancer is uh, number one cancer in women in regards to the reproductive tracts here. And then um, 90, there is a lot of ranges that I gathered. Uh, some books say it's 95%. 
some quoted 99% is because of HPV, but majority quote that um, it is more than 95%. Uh, but 70% of the HPV is caused by the high virulence, which is the 16 and 18. This is the reason why we have previously a vaccine that actually can prevent 99.8% preventions for um, cervical cancer. So that is why previously we have the bivalent, um, bivalent vaccine, which actually covered 16 and 18. And now we have the quadrivalent of vaccine. Uh, which also covered 16, 18 and also 6, 11, which responsible to the genital warts. This one is CA. So we have a high uh, virulence, we have moderate virulence and we have a low virulence and there is hundreds of types of HPV um, genotype but I only remember uh, about the high virulence because that will be the main focus in most of the papers. So the high virulence includes 16, 18 and then 33, 35 and also, oh, sorry, 31, 35, 39, uh, 45, 51, 59, 56, sorry. So this is the class of the high virulence. And we'll go back to uh, how to screen. So basically, previously we did a pap smear as a screening. But since we have now, we are moving towards the HPV genotype. Genotype where it can detect, automatically can detect this uh, uh, HPV DNA. So clearly HPV is a DNA type of virus. And um, this is an automated, so there, there will be a lower risk of um, a variant in the results reading. But uh, and so now the HPV uh, genotype is one replacing the, uh, it will become later on in the plan to become a primary screening. Secondly, it is actually indicated to screen a low grade a borderline um, uh, borderline dyscariosis and third one is uh, later it's going to become the tests of cure which I'll explain later in details thank you